Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, unboxing and overview of the Logitech Z333 2.1 stereo sound system with a powered subwoofer. I have covered other speaker systems in the past. You can see some of them here on the desk. I am going to compare and contrast this to some higher and lower priced options and then talk to you about why you might consider this one over those. First, I want to be very clear up front, this video is not going to have a bunch of sound tone tests and a bunch of uh, playback files where we put all the speakers in a sound isolation chamber and show you how great each of them sound. First, I don't have a sound isolation chamber. Second, if you're watching this through your cell phone, an iPad, or your laptop's computer speakers, none of that's going to make a difference because you can't hear the difference anyway. You need really good quality on your end in order to hear what it sounds like. And then of course YouTube compresses the sound further affecting the playback. Instead I'm going to approach this from a different point of view. I have 10 different sets of computer speakers in my home ranging from $10 to over $100. I've used hundreds of different speakers over the past 20 years both professionally and personally from various companies. Logitech is the number one PC speaker brand and I own a lot of them. In fact, this Z313 uh, system right here, which I've previously done a video on, is actually installed on my desk just over here on my main video recording setup. I've got various other systems, the Z323, which is downstairs on my Ryzen 7 system, and then I've got some others. So from my point of view, I'm gonna share with you my experiences of using $25, $50, and $100 speakers. First, let me say you get what you pay for, $10, $20, $50, and it goes way up from there. Now, I have each of these speakers, except for this one, which I'm about to open, installed on various systems. I've covered many of them in previous videos. Let me start from lowest to highest and work my way up as to what the pros and cons of each are, and then we'll unbox this and take a look at this new setup. Everything I'm going to discuss is linked down in the video description below to Amazon and Newegg as appropriate. Please check current prices. Sales and deals happen often. Logitech speakers are often on sale. The prices that I'm discussing today were current as of filming of this video. Starting off at just $10, we have basic speakers. These work. They're excellent at providing audio. I wouldn't want to listen to music on them for any length of time. I certainly wouldn't want to game on them for any length of time. But if you simply need to put audio on a basic computer, they do the job. I've used speakers such as this for years on business machines that simply needed some kind of speaker installed, but not too expensive. I actually use these speakers on my test bench behind me, not my main machine here, because I simply need something that provides audio. But it's just a testing machine. I put various computers there, and so I just need something small, simple, and cheap to provide sound. If you you just want something like that, $10. Please note, they are not that great of speakers. There's no bass response. There's very little highs and lows. It's sound. If you want to listen to music or play games, please spend a whole $10 more and buy something like the Logitech Z200s. Now, there's no powered subwoofer with these, but they are more than double the power per speaker. They have a much better range. And if you just want to listen to some music, play some casual games, or simply have a higher level of fidelity, these are much nicer speakers than those. Of course, if you're buying for 10 computers and they're just business machines, these are fine, but honestly, for a home machine or for a personal user, these are well worth spending $20 on versus 10 on those. Of course, having made that argument, spend $10 more and get a powered subwoofer. The Z313 is just under $30 and it actually includes a real subwoofer. The speakers are about the same, so in terms of the satellite speakers between these two kits, they're almost identical in terms of frequency, range, response, power, etc. But subwoofer. So if you want to listen to music that has more deep basses to it, if you want to play games that involve more explosions, you will get better sound with the 313s over the 200s. Just keep in mind you need a place on the floor or behind the desk somewhere to put the subwoofer out of the way. That is perhaps where you get into the bigger systems where you run into space issues. If you don't have a lot of room, the Z200s, but if you've got room for the subwoofer, get the Z313s. Stepping up from the 13s, we have the 33s. What's the difference? Well, they're both 2.1 sound systems. They both have powered subs, but the triple threes have more power. It's 40 watts continuous, 80 watts peak. That's a noticeable jump over the 313. Does this matter? That depends. Are you a casual gamer or a more serious gamer? Do you like to listen to music? Do you want a larger full range? Do you want a bigger sound system? All you have to do is simply look at the size of these things to know that this has a bigger sub, bigger drivers, and more power. Now, more power means it's louder. It doesn't necessarily mean it's 
better. I will take these out of the box, I will plug them in, and I will use them before the end of this video, and I'll give you my opinion on them. But I do own other $50 speakers, and if my prior experience is anything to go by, this will sound fuller and richer than those will. The question is, is it worth it to you? It depends entirely upon how much you use your speakers and what you do with it. Interestingly enough, if you step up to the 5.1 surround systems, it's not necessarily more expensive. This is 75 watts continuous power, and it's a 5.1 full surround sound system with fronts, rears, a center, and a powered sub. This is currently only $10 more expensive than the Triple Three is. That's not bad, but it's on sale at the moment, and so when you watch this video and you check the links down below, if you find this to be more expensive, Sales and deals happen, they come and they go. But if you want a full surround sound system, the Z506 is a very, very good deal. More power, five plus one speakers, but you need space to install it. You gotta have room in the back to put the speakers. You gotta have a place to put that center. So it takes more to set it up. I personally don't have very many places where a full surround sound system actually works because of the size of the room or the acoustics of the room or, or where the computer is in the room. I think most people are really best off with a 2.1 system. If you want the surround effect, headphones might actually be a better way to go for a lot of people. Now, all of these speakers on the desk, especially the cheaper ones, but even these nice systems here are general mid-range consumer systems. They are not high-end, high-fidelity, super premium sound systems. They do make them. In fact, Logitech has a very nice 5.1 surround system called the 906. The 906 is five times the price of these kits. It's $250. This is 75 watts continuous power. The 906 is 500 watts of continuous 1000 watt peak. That is a serious sound system on a completely different level. It's not appropriate for most people, but if you're a serious connoisseur of sound, if you're the kind of person who thinks a $200 pair of headphones sounds reasonable, you might wanna look at the 906s if you're interested in Logitech as a brand. But when you hit the $250 price point, there's a whole world of speakers that opens up beyond just general consumer uh, speakers. Schneidhauser speakers, Bose, studio monitors, and frankly, a lot of other very fancy things that are outside of my personal wheelhouse of speaker experience. I own a lot of $30 to $100 speakers. I don't own a lot of $250 speakers, so I'll leave that point there. The only other addition that I'll make is once you get above the $50 price point for speakers, especially $100, $200 speakers, or $100 to $200 headphones, or if you're going to a surround sound system, consider replacing the built-in sound in your system with something like this. I recently did a video on this and I'm currently using this to record the audio that you're listening to right now. The Sound Blaster Aud Audiology RX or the Sound Blaster Z or one of the other sound cards, ASUS makes a nice uh, sonar sound card, provides the option of better audio processing than what's built into the motherboard. I've had hit and miss luck with motherboard audio. Uh, my previous system, the Ryzen 7 with the ASUS Crosshair 6 Hero had nice audio. Several people complimented that my recording on it was nice. My current Skylake X audio has been less than stellar. In fact, the reason why I ended up putting a sound card in was with the recording quality of the supposed high-end Realtek ALC1220 audio on my motherboard, frankly, wasn't very high-end at all. Installing the sound card gave me much better sound. Now that's all just meant to be a general overview of sound options running through price points. As I said, my experience with sound, spend more, get more. The $50 speakers do sound better than the $25 speakers. The $10 speakers really are cheap and tinny, but they do the job if you just need sound. $100 speakers, which I do have one set of, although it's not here on the desk, sound even better, but there's a law of diminishing returns at some point. Perhaps it's my 40-year-old ears, but as you go higher in the sound system uh, price range, you get ever-diminishing returns. You have to spend a lot of money at some point to get ever-smaller returns. They're there, but I think this might be the sweet spot of price to performance. And without any further ado, let's open this up. Now this is very nice. I've said many times on my channel in the past, quality products come in quality packaging, cheap products come in cheap packaging. Those $10 speakers back there, there's nothing in the box. They're just wrapped in plastic with some cardboard fillers. It's very cheap. This is nice. Take a look at the diagrams and setup guide included on the box flaps. I like it already. I've pulled this box out of this box and it contains the two satellite drivers. Did I mention something about packaging? 
Take a look at how nicely these are packaged inside the cardboard. I realize it's just packaging, but when they take the time to pack it like this, you know you're getting something nice. Those Logitech Z313s back there for $27 aren't packed like this. It's just plastic wrapped with some protective cardboard uh, on the edges of the box, so nice. And we'll take these speakers out of the plastic. Not to beat a dead horse or anything, my apologies to horse lovers everywhere, they're awesome, but they actually put a handle around the subwoofer making it easy to pull out of the box. This is, this is nice. Let me take this opportunity here to mention I have no relationship with Logitech. They didn't send me any of this. I've never emailed them. They've never emailed me. I purchased all these Logitech items with my own money. I've been a Logitech user for a long, long time. I'm just genuinely a fan of their products. Those of you who are long time viewers know I do receive some samples from companies. These are not samples. I just like them. I now have everything out of the box and unwrapped. What are my first impressions? I think these look really, really nice. I like that there's no volume switches or power switches or anything else on the front of these. My personal preference is to put the satellites further back from me beyond arm's reach and out to the side to provide really rich, wide sound. I don't wanna to have to reach over to try to control it, which is what is so nice about the hockey puck. Power switch is right here on the side of the hockey puck. This has a nice long cable that connects to the subwoofer. Simply put this on your desk next to your keyboard or mouse. This is simply a nice shuttle volume control on the top and then an on off switch. So you don't have to reach down here to turn them on and off. You don't have to reach to these. It's right on the hockey puck. There is also a headphone jack on the side of the hockey puck. If you do want to plug headphones in, no need to reach down to your computer, plug them in the front of the back. Just plug it into the side of your hockey puck and you're good to go. For your actual PC sound itself, this is the cable that runs from the small 3.5 millimeter jack out of the back of your computer to the subwoofer itself, which then runs out to the satellites. This is plenty long. Your subwoofer is going under the desk. Most likely your computer's under the desk, or at least it's centered somewhere. This is this should not have a problem reaching because I've actually got it stretched out and then it runs back here again into the back of your computer. On the other hand, the cables that run from the subwoofer to the satellites are not as long as I would like to see, but none of them are. Frankly, I've had to use extenders in the past, and this cable here is what runs from the back of each of the satellites to the back of the subwoofer. They don't plug in your computer, all the cables run to the back of the sub, and the sub plugs into the computer. The thing is, is while this is long-ish, if you put the satellites anywhere but directly next to a single monitor and directly above where the subwoofer is under your desk, they're not going to be long enough. I prefer to put my satellites further out and further back, but thankfully these are standard RCA connections. These are completely normal and extension cables are both readily available and cheap. These are color coded, one's blue, one's black, and they just plug into the back of the subwoofer. Just a quick shot of what the satellites look like. They are very plain and black on all sides. You can see the cable coming out of the back. It just looks very clean and very simple. If you're looking for a basic look that's not too uh, flashy or gaudy that just blends into the background, these have got you covered. Now, what about the powered sub itself? It's got a very nice air intake here, and as you can see, it's got a fairly big driver. If you want more than this, well, you're gonna be rocking your house louder than I will. This is plenty for most people. The power cable is also sufficiently long. The only thing that needs power is the sub itself. It sends power out via the cables to the satellites themselves, so it's just this which will extend out plenty to plug this in. Turning the subwoofer around, you can see the back. Now, we have a bass control back here, so you can make it more and less intense separate from the satellites if you want more or less rumble. That's nice. You can see multiple connections here. Now, the black and the blue are for the outputs to the satellites, but it also has inputs. You do not have to use the 3.5 millimeter mini jack input that's hardwired into it. If you've got either a television or an Xbox or uh, some external sound source that is not a standard three and a half millimeter jack, you've got two standard RCA audio jacks back here, which are input, and it will take sound from those as well. So you have choices. Okay, in between that last take and right now, I've now actually had these plugged in. How do they sound? Oh, they are so much better than the 313s back there. Those are $27, these are about $55. If you've got the money, if you want better sound, these are worth it. Those are fine for basic gaming and sound, but the bass response, the high notes on these are much nicer than those. 
I might end up with another pair of these for my system over here, which I've got the 313s right here right now, but after taking these and plugging them in, you get what you pay for. Do you want better sound? $50 gets you really, really nice sound. Now, have I ever heard better sound in my life? Yes. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of speakers will get you better sound. Make note, these, you know, this is not the best sound in the world, but compared to the $25 speakers, yes. If, if you've got the $25, spend the money. Get the 333s over the 313s. That's my opinion based upon having both of them. Your mileage may vary depending upon what your preference is and what you're doing with your computer. I hope this brief overview, unboxing, and short look at these speakers was helpful and useful to you. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And let me know what you think of this. Do you want more of this, less of this? Do you want more speakers, something different? I realize this video didn't have a sound test in it, but I don't really have the audio set up to do a proper recording. I don't think it would do it justice which is why I'm just giving you my impression and my opinion based upon having lots of different speakers and listening to them personally. It's a very subjective test, I realize that, but with where I'm at, it's what I can do. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Also, all these speakers are linked down in the video description below. If you found this helpful and useful to you, please use those links when shopping. They are affiliate links, they do support the channel, and I'm greatly appreciative if you're able to do so. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.